Ned Valesi is with me to talk uh, a little bit about um, religious liberty and then also to talk about uh, the Hyde Amendment. Uh, there are other things that are going on in the state capitol as well, but uh, today I, w I just wanted to focus on uh, on those two items because I think they're, they're, uh, they are they are important for um, our our work, our never ending work of trying to bring the gospel into the public square. Uh, the uh, the USCCB, the United States uh, Conference of Catholic Bishops, is inaugurating um, a week of religious liberty and. Um, and this is uh, a time for us to remember how, how important that is to the character of American society, uh, that uh, religious liberty is, a, is an important feature of American life. And uh, we're in a time where that is not always appreciated, um, uh, not by many of the, um, the institutions in American society today, and even many Catholics don't always appreciate what religious liberty is about. Just recently, there was an important religious liberty case decided by the Supreme Court. Um, I believe it's uh, Fulton versus uh, the, the city of Philadelphia. And uh, I'd like uh, Ned to talk a little bit about that. Sure, thank you, Bishop. Uh, good to be with you today. Uh, the, uh, the case is indeed a, a, a important one, an interesting one, but not a substantial one. So I think that that's, a, that's how I would preface it. Uh, it's an important one because it signals that the uh, this Supreme Court is willing to engage the issue of religious liberty, which has been, uh, you know, a contentious one in our culture and our society for a number of years. Um, it's a, uh, you know, it's a significant one in the sense that it deals directly for us as Catholics with uh, Catholic charities in the city of Philadelphia and working with uh, foster parents in uh, and. The city was going to require them to work with uh, gay and lesbian couples and everyone else, which uh, they were willing to do, but not necessarily willing to place the children in those foster settings. The city then sued sued them for that, and uh, you know it's a it's a sad scenario because the city of Philadelphia needs uh, to have a foster agency like our Catholic Charities working there, and they have such a, a long, long history of dealing, as the court points out with the most difficult of all the children. Yeah. The, 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 case, the court ruled that uh, the city, uh, very narrowly ruled, I would say, which is why it's, a, it's an interesting decision. Uh, they ruled narrowly that the, the city could not discriminate against Catholic charities because in their law, they had put in the fact that the commissioner was allowed to make discretionary changes. And they said that made it, that made it uh, objectionable for the entire Supreme Court. Um, they did not get directly to the question of whether or not an underlying decision called Smith um, would be overturned and would definitely grant religious liberty to, um, to organizations like Catholic Charities. So it was important, it was significant, but it was also narrow. And, uh, you know, and so it's a, it's a challenging moment and it points to the larger issue of religious liberty that uh, the USCCB is inviting us to look at right now, uh, because it it is one of those uh, neuralgic issues in our culture right now. You know, I think that uh, you know, first of all, just to point out what was remarkable about this decision when it when it initially came out was the fact that it was it it was a unanimous decision by the court. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, which which um, then when when you consider um, how. Um, uh, you know, how diverse the uh, the court is that they were able to get all the justices on board uh, explains why the decision had to be so narrow. That's but correct. I, one, of, one of the things that I, I want to point to, and 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 uh, Ned, you and I are 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 familiar with this. That you know that this 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 matter of Catholic charities uh, being involved in uh, in in foster care uh, was. Uh, you know that, that that religious organizations and definitely Catholic organizations have always cooperated uh, with uh, with society and with the state in in providing public goods, and yes. that that in, in in the past there has always been an understanding that we bring our own character, our own religious character to that work, and that that creates a that just that there's a, there, that that creates a spectrum of, of 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 services that meet the need of the community and uh, but that that uh, while oftentimes um, 
that uh, religious liberty is being uh, attacked using the argument that uh, we are being intolerant. The fact of the matter is, is that what is happening is that there is an intolerance for religious organizations to be involved in, 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 uh, in providing uh, public goods and public services. Well, well said, Bishop. And I think we can, you know, we can point back to an example in the Archdiocese of San Francisco some 15 or 16 years ago when the Archbishop had to turn over the license that they had for foster care and adoption in San Francisco because after two years of negotiation where Catholic Charities agreed that they would refer people to the appropriate parties, but they were not going to necessarily place people there, the, the city and, you know, and eventually the, the county there, the city and county decided that the individual rights of gay and lesbian people was more important than the needs of the children in the society there. So 125 yeah. years of being the prime provider you know, was vacated over a question of, of you know, individual rights when there was a willingness to accommodate, there was a willingness to, you know, to find a responsible way. And yes, it reflected, in my opinion, the intolerance of you know, certain segments of our society to find a way to get along, to find a way to do what needs to be done, and to find a way to, to deal with the larger needs in society. So I, I think you're totally correct in how you describe it. And I think the right. challenge in Fulton is, is to figure out how we're going to move from this particular 9-0 decision into a decision that moves us uh, eventually into a more tolerant society. I think that, you know, and, and, and this is important. This is important for all churches, obviously. But I think it's very important for the Catholic Church and, and, and the Catholic community because we believe in, in engaging the public square. We believe in serving the common good, that that's, that's yeah. how we bring the, the mercy and the wisdom of Jesus into society is precisely because we provide social services. That's why we do health care. And that's why we offer schools. And, yeah. and all the many ways that we engage with our community is precisely uh, because we believe in serving the common good and we and we believe that the gospel uh, is not just a religious preference but that in fact it 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 uh, it, it does lift up all humanity and that we have something to contribute to the well-being of society yeah and well well said and you know and we uh, you know we are the largest private provider of health care social services and education in the state of yeah. California probably in the yeah. country you know, and we do so because our theology, as you point out, we have a very public theology, and that puts us at odds with the society. The society wishes right now to privatize faith, and only right. and you can only express it privately. You know, you want to worship, go ahead and worship wherever you want to worship. But if you want to, if you want to engage in serving the public, then you must do it our way. And we're trying to say, well, no, we don't have a choice. We will engage the public. We will be out there. We will be the body and in, in the, you know, in the hands and the feet and, you know, the eyes and the, the, the love of Christ in the world. We will be that. And, you know, yeah. and we don't have a choice but to, to do so. And that's going to put us in conflict. Turning to another matter uh, where, again, we, we are in conflict. And this uh, is, is another uh, an area where Catholics are, are encouraged and urged to, to engage. And that is in the whole area of of, 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 of politics and, and, and legislation. And um, what is of a, a big concern right now is uh, the, you know, the current administration and, and, and significant portions of the Congress are now looking to overturn the Hyde Amendment. And, um, uh, and, and again, this is, uh, and I think it's important for us to say as Catholic community, as a Catholic community, that yes, this is what our, you know, that, uh, our opposition to abortion is is rooted in our faith, but it's also rooted in reason. And so that um, I, this is not a religious imposition. This is a reasonable uh, um, uh, pursuit of wanting to protect the dignity of the most vulnerable among us. And uh, if you could explain just a little bit of what the, sure. what's at stake with the Hyde Amendment and why it's sure. important. The Hyde, the Hyde Amendment has been in place uh, for about, uh, I think, around 46 years. Yeah. Um, in Congress, it was a compromise um, that was struck uh, amongst uh, pro-life and pro-choice, quote unquote, pro-choice politicians 46 years ago to make sure that our federal tax dollars was not being used to fund, and it was not being used to fund abortion. 
if individual states wanted to do something, if individual communities wanted to do that, they could do it. But it was a compromise, and it was a way, again, a way of toleration, a way of trying to find a median. And, and uh, you know, our current president, uh, Biden, who's proposing to do away with it, has supported it for 46 years. 45 years, I guess, he pulled it the last year when he decided to run for president. And, you know, and, and that's what's so sad about it is that, uh, you know, we... You know, we, we're now again in the society walking back the compromises, the tolerance, the way in which we've tried to figure out a way to work together. So it's significant and it's important for Catholics to step up and to express our voice that we don't want that to happen. And, you know, the in that compromise, the other side, uh, you know, put it together, you know, and, and sadly fund, funded Planned Parenthood. And so Planned Parenthood provides abortions all over the country. And, you know, it's just, it's not the time, it's not the place, it's not the opportunity for us to roll back the Hyde Amendment. We need to protect it and keep it. And so uh, because of that, again, there will be efforts to, uh, to uh, uphold the Hyde Amendment in the current Congress. And, and I'm asking uh, um, all of us who, to, to please go to uh, the diocesan website and to look for further information on religious liberty as well as how to uphold the Hyde Amendment. I'll also say that you can also you can go to uh, 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 you know uh, uh, CA Catholic, which is uh, uh, cacatholic.org, which also has uh, information on these issues, um, and and that's the website for the California Catholic Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, please um, uh, take the time this summer as we approach as we approach the the Fourth of July and we um, celebrate. Um, uh, the the uh, all that we've accomplished as as Americans. Um, let's look at those core values that have to be at the heart of what creates a good a good society. And one of those is religious liberty, and the other is the dignity of the human life. Yes. And so I please go to the Dawson website and look for further information. Um, I want to thank you, Ned, for joining me for this uh, conversation, You're and and ask all of us to continue to ask for God's wisdom uh, and, and, and God's charity on our nation as we, uh, we, we, we seek uh, to, uh, to create that, uh, so that society, that civilization of love um, that, that supports the dignity of the human person, especially the most vulnerable among us. God bless.